Asexual versus Sexual Reproduction by Katrina Sherman. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of asexual and sexual reproduction. You'll know how babies are made um, on the cellular level, and you'll be provided with examples from the New York State exam to test your knowledge. So let's first talk about what's the purpose of reproduction. It's to make sure a species can continue. And reproduction is a process by which an organism produces others at the same time. Reproduction is responsible for making families in all around the world and the spread of germs and bacteria. But this is how life goes on and continues on our planet. Sexual reproduction requires two parents and they make a non-identical offspring. And these parents Right? Each of their body cells has a nucleus which contains 100% of the DNA, but in their testes and their ovaries and their gametes, they create these things called sex cells. And each sex cell only contains 50% of the DNA needed in a body cell or in a cell to make a offspring. And these sex cells are called the sperm and the egg. And when they come together, when the sperm penetrates the egg, or when the union of the male and female sex cells come together, that is called fertilization. And the cool thing, or the interesting thing about fertilization, is that it can happen internally, like inside of the female, as in humans, right? or externally, outside of the body. And that can be something like fish or frogs. But here is what fertilization looks like internally and externally. The egg unites with the sperm. Now let's talk about cell division mitosis. What happens once the DNA combines to get 100% of it? Well, the cells begin to divide, and that one parent cell divides into two or more daughter cells. Well, just really two. But here's an interesting thing. All that cells start to differentiate, right? After they start to divide, they start to become hair cells, skin cells, bone cells. They start as a zygote, and then they go all the way to a blastless in the embryo. So, it's a little different than when we just make identical copies of ourselves, because after we start making those copies, they differentiate, and then they create an offspring. Crazy. That one cell is now something that has cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. And it is has 50% of the DNA from its mother and its father. And this offspring has a random mix of genes. They'll make it slightly different from its brother, sister, mother, and father. So asexual reproduction is different. They both produce offspring, but asexual reproduction results in offspring that is genetically identical to the parent of the organism. This means that 100% of the DNA found in the offspring of a asexual reproducing organism is the same as one parent in, that they inherited from. So they're identical. Asexual reproduction, right, has many different ways of doing this. Um, there's binary vision, where a unicellular organism can have asexual reproduction so quickly, so rapidly, by dividing into two equal halves through cell division. This is also called binary vision. Then you have like plants that can reproduce through something called vegetation propagation. And that's basically like when you take a part of the plant and you replant it and it starts to grow and it's identical to the other plant, like this pineapple. Try it. Cut off the top of the pineapple, put in some water, see what happens. Then there's budding. Budding is when a tiny part of an original organism grows into a separate organism. It just like pops off. And this, for example, this hydra, right? That little piece there became a new one. Yeast is a great example of budding as well. Then there's something called fragmentation. Um, and it's another form of asexual reproduction. The organism is split into fragments, or pieces, 
and these pieces can then grow and become um, a separate organism. So we talked about how cell division is in both asexual and sexual reproduction. I want to clarify the role in each, sexual and asexual reproduction organisms. So in multicellular organisms, the cells don't get just so big that they grow with you. They wouldn't be microscopic cells, right? They're actually responsible for growth and repair. So each time you grow, you're just getting more cells, not bigger cells. In unicellular organisms, they're responsible for asexual reproduction. So here's an overview of sexual and asexual reproduction. And let's look at this chart. So, sexual reproduction, the definition. Sexual reproduction requires two parents to donate genes to the young, resulting in offspring with a mix of inherited genes. Asexual reproduction only has one parent and is results in offspring that are genetically identical to the parents. Now, advantages. The main advantage of sexual reproduction is genetic variation. The offspring has a mix of inherited genes. This means that the different offspring have different traits, strengths, and weaknesses. This is good for the survival of the species. Asexual reproduction is very quick. There is no energy wasted on courtship and mating. Disadvantages of sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction requires a lot of energy. Think about how much energy species spend on their courting rituals and how much energy it takes to get the mother the food and to deliver a child or to protect their eggs. Now, asexual reproduction, their disadvantage is that they have no genetic variation. This is why Lysol can kill 99.9% .9 of germs. It's only that 0.1% that had a mutation. Now. Sexually reproducing species usually are plants and animals. Asexual reproducing species include unicellular organisms like amoebas, bacteria, and yeast. Then there's some multicellular organisms like starfish and some worms. So here are some practice questions now, and these are from the New York State 8th grade exam. Number one, asexually produced offspring are genetically one, identical to the parent, two, different from the parent, three, different from each other, Four, formed by two parents. Number two, which process gives rise to a variety of traits within a species? One, sexual reproduction. Two, dynamic equilibrium. Three, cellular respiration. Or four, internal regulation. Number three, in one celled organism, cell division is responsible for one, growth and maintenance. Two, sexual reproduction. Three, asexual reproduction. Or four, production of sex cells. Pause this video and try to answer these questions. So number one was asexually produced offspring are genetically identical to the parent, right? They are the exact copies of themselves. It can't be number two because they don't mix DNA, there's no genetic variation. It can't be number three because they aren't different from each other. And four, it only requires one parent. Number two, which process gives rise to a variety of traits within the species. The answer is sexual reproduction. It can't be three because that's where it happens in mitochondria to give us energy. Number four and number two refer to something around similar to homeostasis. Number three, in one celled organism, cell division is responsible for growth and maintenance. It is wrong. The correct answer is number three, asexual reproduction. short response. Based on your answers to questions 4 through 6 on the diagram below and your knowledge of science. The diagram shows the results of sexual reproduction. You got two parents and four offspring. Question number four. Identify the two sex cells that are necessary for sexual reproduction. Number five. In each of the offspring, what percentage of the genetic material comes from the male parent? Number six, state one advantage that a species that produces sexually has over a species that reproduces asexually. 
pause and answer, then return when you're ready. The two sex cells are necessary for sexual reproduction of the sperm and the egg, and each of the offspring gets 50% of their genetic material from the male parent. Now here are some several possible answers to the question. State one advantage that a species that reproduces sexually has over a species that produces asexually. Some acceptable responses include, but not limited to, the offspring will not be the same, there is less of a chance that the species will become extinct, it allows for a variation which leads to natural selection, its offspring will carry traits from both parents, the species has the opportunity to become diverse and making it easier to survive, more genetic diversity within the species. This gives a rise to variation of species with different traits and characteristics. Number seven, a multiple choice question that I see a lot of people get wrong because they're not reading carefully or marking up their exam. A new yeast cell is sometimes produced from a single parent by the process called budding. The process of budding is best described as one, sexual reproduction with genetically identical offspring, two, sexual reproduction with genetically different offspring, number three, sexual reproduction with genetically identical offspring, four, sexual reproduction with genetically different offspring. Take a second, read it, mark it up, and then come back to the answer. So the best way to do this is mark it up. We know that yeast is asexual, so we cross out sexual reproduction. Now we're down to two parts. Now, asexual genetically identical or genetically different? We know that asexual is genetically identical, so it has to be number one. Number eight, the diagram below shows a one-celled organism reproducing. This is an example of asexual reproduction. What information in the diagram supports this statement? Pause and play when you're ready. Acceptable responses include, but are not limited to, only one parent, the offspring are identical to the parent, fertilization does not occur, one cell divides the two, and an unacceptable response includes the splitting of cells.